join this conversation. Do you think they should bring the old shows back? Do you think that because of economic reasons they haven't? Maybe for marketing reasons, they'll bring it back a little bit later. Maybe they'll bring it back now. Well, for instance, they're finally starting to put like all these old shows on the DVDs. If anyone's been noticing that, they brought back Invader Sim to Nickelodeon, and then they make the DVD box set. Then they didn't do it for Rocko's Mar Life, but Rocko's Mar Life isn't on Nickelodeon, but it's on the DVD box set. They're making they're making progress. And Rocko's Mar Life will be going on the '90s or all that lineup on T Nick. It will. It, yes, it will be coming on soon. Right now, on the '90s or all that, I believe. Keenan Kettle is still on. The original all of that could be up to season two. I don't have Teen Nick here at the college, so I'm not sure. And they just took away Clarissa Explains It All and Doug, and they replaced it with Hey Arnold. And I think who else they replaced it with? Wait, so they got rid of Doug? Well, they didn't get rid of Doug. They took it off the lineup to put on, a, put on another show because they... I felt when it was a transitioning from summer into school time, they wanted to put on two more shows. And now on Friday nights for Teen Nick, and by the way, I'm not sure what the fourth show may be playing on the lineup. To Friday night, brand new thing this lineup has been doing. You can go on the website. You can get to vote what you want them to play. Out of the 12 to 15 shows they will offer, you can go online, vote what you want to play. And then they will see who voted, and they will play that show. And guess who's hosting it? Stick Stickly. Remember the stick? Stick. Stick Stickly, his little pop school stick. He used to have his own little like little TV show. He used to be on Snick. If you don't, if you know who Stick Stickly is, he was a very popular little pop school stick who used to go on a few times during Snick uh, lineup on Saturday nights on Nickelodeon, and he will be hosting. Or he is now hosting this voting process on the, the 90s or all that lineup on T Nick. And I'm very excited. I, I, I want to go home just to see Stick Stickly once again. If you're a 90s person like I am, you know who Stick, <laughs> Stick Stickly is. And what also they had, Paul, on uh, TV shows was do you remember they had the game show channel? The game show, yeah, with, with the temple, you know? Yeah. They had all these, they had that channel, it was Nick and Gas channel, and they took it off. I, I, Remember how I they used to why. slime people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> slime. They created slime. It was great. The green, oh, slime. And even the woman got slime. Didn't matter about their hair or nothing. It was fun. Now, now what does Nickelodeon have to offer? Cows talking who are male. Oh, I, I have not. Not matter, cows show. are female. I think it's Barn, I think it's Farm, Barn Farm. It's a Nick Jr. show. And by the way, Nick Jr. has his own channel, by the way. Well, they have all these, they also have Teen Nick, like you said. They have uh, all these uh, sister Nickelodeon channels. They have Nickelodeon, Nick 2, Nick Jr., Teen Nick. Nick Toons. And then uh, Noggin. And Nick Toons, yes. And that's what I'm saying, Paul. Let's bring the 90s, all that. Maybe not now. Let them at least think about it when they feel it's the right time to throw it out there. A 90s channel. At the right time when you feel that the 90s, all of that, that lineup on T Nick has been building up. You see that money has been rolling in. A demand of this is building and building and building. When you take off those shows, people are demanding to bring those shows that you took off that lineup to come back. And eventually, when they feel it's the right time for the market, for Nickelodeon, Boom, out of nowhere. 90s all that channel, put it on one cable provider, and eventually spread it on to all the cable providers. Cable pro- providers, for example, Time Warner, Comcast, Fios, DirecTV, Dish Network, AT&T, and many more around the country. And Nickelodeon can do that for five years. They can make a lot of money. And by making a lot of money, they can build brand new stars because of it. They can fund into brand new shows and... Before you know it, Nickelodeon's back on top, and we see it's building. Disney is on to decrease. They haven't been making any brand new stars. Hold on, you're saying Nickelodeon on top? Yes. What Nickelodeon. about Cartoon Network? Well, well, Cartoon Network. They, I feel, if Cartoon Network is listening to this show, and if they are looking at what Nickelodeon has been doing, they could do the same exact thing. They, they have to bring the, back Cartoon Fridays, man. They, 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 they have to bring original Toonami. Cartoon Network. You have to bring back Toonami, man. 
Everyone remember Toonami? Toonami. It was like, <laughs> they showed all the anime. And it just, it just after they started repeating yeah. Naruto and Bobo Bo, they, they just decided to kill it for some reason. And the problem is, they try to put brand new stuff. It's not working. All the anime is now on the old Kids WB. It's not a CW. I miss Kids WB. Kids WB was awesome. We live in a world today where if you throw something new, the odds of the viewer or the listener, if it's radio or TV, watching it or listening to it, they have a chance to, I think we'll like this show. Now, these channels, if you throw on a TV show on Nickelodeon and it's not good, the then Nickelodeon loses a lot of money, and that viewer, that listener, has so much selection to go to. And they feel that show Nickelodeon's not working, they can go somewhere else. That's why you really have to be very cautious of what you put on TV. You have to experiment to know that you are guaranteed to make money. Because when it comes to the money point of view, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network has to think about that, and they feel maybe we do have to bring on these brand new, uh, these old shows back. And we can, and then we can, and then by by uh, having bringing these viewers back, we can experiment on the new shows we want and bring it back onto the, uh, well, introduce these shows onto these li- onto the lineup, and uh, but b- before you know it, Children's Television is back. What do you think about the PBS Public Broadcasting? PBS Arthur, uh, Dragon Tales. Dragon Tales, Arthur, uh, what was it, Clifford the Big Red Dog? Clifford the Big Red Talk, Sesame Street, Barney and Friends. Sesame Street's still going on. Yeah, and Arthur. Arthur, I believe, hits its 15th season. Arthur is still on? Still on. They changed the voices, though. I don't know. Arthur gives me the chills. I think that's one of the greatest children's shows I've ever watched. Something about that show, the plots they give... The the adventures they go on, the you know the uh, uh, controversies when it comes to friendship and teachers, it really shows childhood. Now, when we talk about Arthur, before we transition on to our next topic, Arthur has really shown the No the Children's Show what has been going on in that certain year. When I watch the old episodes of Arthur. UC 90s. Recently, a few months back, I've watched Arthur, one of the new shows, and they really show what's been going on around this decade, or around recently. We see Arthur has cell phone now, we, we see laptops. It's amazing how Arthur really tries to relate what's going on now, and it's awesome because five, six, seven years later, we can really relate. Oh, see, Arthur shows what my childhood it used to be like Arthur Reed. I love you. That koala bear of his. Don't forget Buster. Oh, Buster Baxter comes in. Hi, everybody. He runs in like his whole stack of food. Obesity. <laughs> Nothing. No one's big. Binky Barnes the only big one. Yet he never eats a thing. Buster. I love pizza day. And we're looking at him. What the heck? <laughs> you can always relate your best friend to Buster Baxter. I love him. All right, let's go move on to the next topic. Why so, not? Yeah, get ready for the clip. <laughs> I'm going to go into this, okay? I'm sure all you people in the dorms out there have been have become aware that there are cameras watching you. They're, they're, they're everywhere. What is the purpose of these cameras? I mean, really. This is like becoming more than socialism. This is communism. How can anyone sleep at night knowing there's a camera watching them in their bed? Like, like if it, maybe you want to pick your nose or something, there's a camera there. <laughs> now, let's go to the ID cards. What, what are the purpose of these ID cards? Just to swipe the door and to go in. To, it's a checkpoint. They don't even need the cards for lunch. The, the lunch is an excuse for you to, to get these cards. Has anyone ever heard about Germany, the national ID cards? Th- this is just like c- repeating the past. And it's not just in the schools. Everyone knows there are cameras everywhere trying to get you a traffic t- ticket when you're speeding or you turn wrong or you think it's a green light and it's a red light, but you go anyway. There's cameras everywhere. You want, you want to know where these cameras have come from, really? Th- this is all attributed to Britain. Obama was like, we're going to follow Britain. First off, that is completely against what America has started when, 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 we, when we rebelled in 1776. We were following British's, like, procedures. 
They have like cameras on trains. They have cameras everywhere. And this is this really stopping terrorism or is it encouraging it? But what kind of world is this we are going into where we we're, we're constantly watched? Why are they watching us to begin with? It's not just terrorism. Why do they have to do this? Uh, Andrew, do you want to say anything about this? Well, the reason why the school is putting these cameras into the dormitory is the past three years I've been here at the college, we've seen a lot of instances happen. We've seen vandalism. We've seen fights. We've seen threats. We've seen peeping toms in, uh, in young women's bathrooms. And I guess the school found the money. They realized we have no way of handling this without the cameras. I think they could have found a way to handle it. And they felt, you know, we got to put these cameras in. I feel with these cameras, as long as you don't abuse the use of these cameras, you inform people when these cameras are being used, if there was a fight or if there was an incident that went on, that will be... That would be acceptable in my eyes. The question is, and Paul is correct, in other words, how can we trust what these cameras are doing? Right now, Andrew, you're putting, you know, what you would see in me, Paul, is I'm putting a lot of trust in these cameras. But Andrew, you have no idea. Is the school looking at you right now? You have no idea. Is, is the government looking at us through government screens? I don't know. And that's why we really have to be very cautious also. And I guess, you know, the school's got a good reason why these cameras should be here. And we hopefully need to cross our fingers that they are not using these cameras consistently for the reason of looking at us or, or a feeling that we need to use these cameras on instances that don't need technology. Whatever happened to use the mind? You know, where, where, where is the experience? You went to school to handle situations without technology. Why can't we continue that? Paul? Yeah. Again, I just, I just see this as a total violation of our rights. I mean, we yeah. all signed this paper that waives our rights of our privacy. We all know that. Why do we have to sign this paper? Why do we have to give up our rights like that? What is it? Benjamin Franklin said any country that would... I don't know, forsake any freedom for protection is no country at all. It's might as well be a totalitarian, totalitarian regime, really. Um. And that's why a lot of people who are very pessimist, meaning people who are scared of change, this is the reason why. I'm not saying there's going to be talking robots in the future. I am saying that the people who are controlling this technology, if we don't if we don't regulate how they're using this technology, if we don't pay attention how they're using it, there's going to be a lot of problems, and this country's going to change, and you're not going to know it until it happens. Let's talk about the airports. I mean, they're, they're trying yeah. to... First off, why do they have the x-rays like that to begin with? You really need to see people naked to tell that they don't have a bomb? Now they're finally trying to downgrade it. Explosive device. The device saw people... They, they saw the sweat on their skins. It was that, that precise. Really? I mean, well, by no, uh, Janet Napolitano, who is the head of the Homeland, uh, Homeland Security, former governor of Arizona, she stated a few days ago that there's going to be different uh, pat-downs for children. You see, I, you see, that's the thing. I mean, the I understand. At on uh, YouTube. I understand the thing with the shoes, but... Yeah, the sh I, I don't... Kids should... If ki I mean, anyone's just going to start using kids now as a weapon because they're, they're making it lighter for kids. It's clear what's going to happen. They're going to, like, put bombs in kids' shoes, like... like Mob explosive devices. Explosive devices. I mean, as soon as they realize there's a bomb in there, they'll explode. They don't even have to get on the airplane. Anyone just think about, like, attacking the airport? Blow up the machines. 